Hello, hello. Hey, hey. Howdy. <laughs> so, uh, welcome back to uh, another episode of ISB in Depth. It's a bonus episode with a very, 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 very special guest. Yes, absolutely. It's Kayla Williams from the Imagination Library. So, it's all going to be Dolly Parton, books, good things, good vibes for children. Um, as usual, we're going to have this up on our normal thing Spotify, uh, Buzzsprout. Um, just in case you haven't got the notice, Google uh, Podcast is closing. So, or and you can watch it on YouTube. Well, you'll see the wonderful Miss Dolly behind us. This is yes. the closest <laughs> I've ever gotten to her. <laughs> we can screw even a little closer. I mean, <laughs> afterwards we're gonna have like photo ops. So like, yes, we can do that. So, um, so yeah. Okay. First question. Tell us who you are. I am Kayla Williams. I am regional director for the Dollywood Foundation, one of the regional directors for the Dollywood Foundation. Um, I support the Imagination Library in the U.S. South, uh, from Texas up to Missouri, Missouri, uh, to West Virginia down to Florida. So um, do a little bit of everything, but mostly supporting the local program partners across my region that implement the Imagination Library in their community. Um, and just to tell you a little bit about who I am, I'm a ninth generation Severe Canyon native. Very yeah. happy. To, yeah, but yeah, I don't know if I'd call myself that, but um, it's really nice to be in the King Family Library because it's very reminiscent for me. Uh, and I spent a lot of time in the local libraries growing up, so it's very nice to be here. We're very We're happy, happy to have you. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, how long have you worked um, for the Imagination Library? I just celebrated my one year anniversary, uh, February 6th. Thank you very much. Um, myself, along with my other colleagues, were all brought on together last February. Um, the Dollywood Foundation had reorganized the country just to support the growth of the Imagination yeah. Library. And we actually all came on together and just celebrated our one year anniversary. Thank you. Amazing. How old is the Imagination Library since mm. this is a new structure? Yeah, um, that's a perfect segue, actually. The Imagination Library started in 1995. Oh, so what's that math? It's older Almost than me. 30 years. It's older than me. I'm 1996. Yeah. I'm 27, turning 28. So it's turning 29 this year. Yeah, 29 this year. We actually celebrate our 30th anniversary next year. So, um, and if it's okay, I can tell you a little bit about the yeah. history and how we got to where we are. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, the Dollywood Foundation is Dolly's nonprofit. Mm -hmm. It was created in 1988. Uh, and then in 1995, Dolly started the Imagination Library, um, and it was actually an inspiration. Sorry, no, it's okay. You can bounce when you're doing great. Right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> um, the Dollywood Foundation was created in 1988, and the Imagination Library started in 1995, and it was an inspiration uh, that blossomed from from Dolly's father, actually, who was functionally illiterate. He couldn't read or write, and Dolly knew in her heart that that probably kept him from seeing some of his dreams come true. Mm -hmm. And so she made it her mission that every child grow up with a home full of books. Um, and it really started, uh, well, it started here in Sevier County. And her intention was, you know, maybe I can reach all the kids here in Sevierville. Mm -hmm. Maybe it'll go a couple counties over. Certainly never imagined a program that's in five countries in all 50 states uh, with 20 statewide programs. But... Um, to explain a little bit about how it works, the Imagination Library is a free book gifting program for children aged birth to five. Um, it mails high quality age appropriate books to a child in their home directly to their mailbox. It, as Dolly says, their little name on the label. Yes, that is so important. I have two little ones and they just love getting their mail, which my oldest, of course, has recently graduated from the program, which was also very special too because she's a older. So, oh, you see, so you got the yeah, uh, lookout like, kindergarten. Congratulations! Yeah, oh, yeah so yeah. that's so special. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and great tie-in in partnerships with libraries, mm -hmm. right? Because yeah. she says, "Go get your library yes, card." Yes, go to the library. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, and we really enjoyed that. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we um, we're currently mailing 2.9 million books a month in five countries. Mm -hmm. So that means 2.9 children somewhere in the world get a book in their mailbox every month. That's um, amazing. Yeah. Was, um, earlier, before we were like rolling, you said something about um, like different levels. How does so they're broken up to like you know little bitty babies and then slightly bigger babies and then you're almost kindergarten babies. Do they all get like the same 
book do you do a rotation like it's yeah. uh, or do you switch them up every year how's that work so this is a perfect question uh, in talking about how the books are selected oh, I skip uh, no 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 I'm uh, no let's, let's we're gonna skip all over the place but this is a perfect segue because I'll tie it both in um, so to answer your question yes there are age groups um, as I said that these are age appropriate books and there are age groups there are six groups and there are criteria for each group we have a blue ribbon book selection committee that meets annually and reviews all we stuff them full of caffeine and food and everything that they need they meet in our office every year and they read every single book that's put in front of them to determine which will be in the collection for the following year mm -hmm. this blue ribbon book select book that's a tongue twister mm -hmm. blue, yeah, you're doing great. thank you <laughs> blue ribbon book selection committee um it's comprised of early childhood education experts literacy experts um authors and uh, they meet, review the books, and decide which would be in the collection. Now, there are a few books in the collection that will always remain. Mm -hmm. Dolly's favorite, the first yes. book, Little Engine That Could. Mm -hmm. And then the last book a child receives is Look Out Kindergarten, Here I Come. Okay. It gets them pumped. It gets them ready for kindergarten. Oh, yeah. um, and if you've ever seen the documentary, The Library That Dolly Built, that Oh, you definitely have to yeah, watch it. It's so amazing. I know I don't get any royalties, but I, I'm promoting it all the time, I promise. Um, they're, they interview a kindergarten teacher here in Sevierville, actually, and she talks about, on the first day of school, reading Look Out Kindergarten, Here I Come, mm -hmm. and how excited the kids get. They're mm -hmm. like, I, I, my mom read that book to me last night. I get that book. Mm -hmm. And so it's an equalizer, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's for all children. The Imagination Library is free to all children, zero to five, regardless of background, mm -hmm. income, socioeconomics. Mm -hmm. So here we have children from across the county across the area that may live in very different households mm -hmm. all having read the same story mm -hmm. and knowing the same book so it's very special so you talked about um to sort of segue you talked about it being in all 50 states is there any sort of criteria that people have to meet in order to um, get the books if they're you know sort of out of this area yeah so the only criteria to sign up for the imagination library is that the address uh, of which the child lives is in a coverage area covered okay. by a local organization, local 501c3, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so as long as it's available in their community, they can sign up. Um, and to talk about the states and how that looks, um, there are local program partners, mm -hmm. local 501c3 or school districts, that actually are the heartbeat of this program and do the heavy lifting, yeah. right? They are the ones promoting the program, fundraising for the cause, mm -hmm. Um, and enrolling children. And uh, in some states, we have local program partners with no legislation, so there's no statewide program. But we actually, at the end of this year, just celebrated 20 states in the country having statewide programs. Oh, wow. So that means an executive order or legislation has been written that the Imagination Library of Alabama, of, of Kentucky, is expanding statewide. And the goal there is to ensure every zip code is covered so that there's equitable access for every child zero to five that can enroll. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. I know you have some bilingual because I catalog so I know you have bilingual. Are there any other with being English and Spanish specifically? Do you have other language options for because obviously multiple countries, you know, sure. multiple states, yeah. ethnicity groups. We don't right now. Uh, that's certainly something that we're looking at later on. Right now we just piloted a bilingual, um, the, the entire collection is bilingual as an option in the state of California. Mm -hmm. That's We're piloting that. We just rolled it out last year when they went uh, statewide. And the goal would be to roll it out across the country. Mm -hmm. We don't really have a time frame for that yeah. yet. That's uh, <laughs> a lot of operational work. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, but to answer your question, you know, we have a lot of French speaking families mm -hmm. uh, and communities in Canada. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that down the road, that we're because we're always looking at um, the children or the families that are in the books mm -hmm. being diverse mm -hmm. and the children reading the books being able to see themselves mm -hmm. in the books. So Absolutely. we're very uh, mindful of that. This is, it's like you started out from like you know the hills of Tennessee and it's expanded. So it's really good to see like diversity. And I like I notice it when I catalog the books that I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. It's, it's very thoughtful. It is. It's very, like I said, they spend seven days, and I had the great honor and fortune of kind of 
eavesdropping on that this last year. They sat outside my office, and I may or may not have left my door cracked the whole time. They invited me out, and I got to sit and watch that process. But um, it's pretty incredible. You know, does it have onomatopoeia? Does it rhyme? Is it visually pleasing? Is it interactive? Mm -hmm. Will the kid enjoy, you know? Um, And to your point, that's why this is my favorite book. Um, Uh, Which the title is. This is uh, I Just Want to Say Goodnight by Rachel Isadora. Um, It's beautiful. It's one of the most... Just for me, it's very touching. Um, it's beautifully illustrated, and it's about a little girl named Lala who her dad to go to sleep, and she says, "No, I just I gotta say goodnight to the fish. Now I gotta say goodnight to the cat. Now I got you know she's just putting off bedtime." Yeah, and I think we can both oh, agree that absolutely. that's a yeah, yeah. that happens that's a, all that's the time. That's a thing that happens every yeah. night. Yeah, happens, so <laughs> yeah. Um, and then it, it's really sweet at the very end of the book. She's going to bed and she wants to say goodnight to her book, and she's holding goodnight moon. Mm-hmm. So it's just I was gonna say that's what it reminded me of, like you know, goodnight. I used to know it, but yeah, the good night moon. Yeah, that yeah. one's our favorite. Yeah. It's like good night mice. Yeah, and like, um, absolutely. We just got Goldilocks and three bears in the mail yesterday. My three-year-old yeah. is yeah. a recipient oh, of the imagination library as well. Yes. Um, and it's the first book she has sat down and asked me to read to her mm-hmm. front to back. Didn't interrupt me. I got to read the reading tips to her. Mm-hmm. And we talk a lot about why this is Dolly's heart program, right? Yes. This is very special to her because of what it does in home. Mm-hmm. We're creating shared bonding time. Mm-hmm one-on-one time in the household whether that be with big sister with mom with dad with grandma with whoever that looks like um and we got through the whole book and it was and she loved it yeah and it was one of our favorites is um the three little pigs um, and i love the illustrations and the one that we have from the imagination library it's so cute and it just like we play like big bad wolf and like three little pigs like beyond just reading the book so it's fun yeah yeah and you know i'm glad to hear you say that because it really in my experience with both my girls it's about how I interact with them with that book. If I just sit and just read it, mm-hmm. they're disinterested. Yeah, exactly. But if I do the voices, yeah, and you I have to do yeah. that. And yeah. so with uh, Goldilocks and Three Bears, you're sure your dad had the big rough, rough yes. one, you know. Yeah. And so it it just resonated with her, and it was fun for her. And then she did it with me, and I cried talking about it because it was you know it was really special. Yeah, yeah absolutely. It's lovely. I'm trying to go through the list. Uh, let's see here. One second. Um, we'll have to do this pause out of here. So I'm guessing the the book that you wish every child could read is probably one of the other. Oh, actually, no, or something. I'm sorry. Sorry. That's my favorite. That's this is favorite. the one I wish every child. Okay, read. yeah, we can. All right. So, what is one book that you wish every child could read if it's different from your favorite book? It is different from my favorite, and it's The Code of Many Colors um, by Dolly. Not only is it beautiful and it tells her story and it's special because it's of her, mm-hmm. um, but it really addresses how we're rich and things other than money mm-hmm. and it addresses bullying mm-hmm. and it's just, it's very near and dear to my heart and it gives, hey, Tyria, talk about it too. Yeah. <laughs> um, I just, it's just such a sweet story. When I'm asked to read at schools, this is usually the book Absolutely. that I'll take and read. Yeah. And I will say, it's hard to read it without sing-songing it, mm-hmm. you know, laying down in the book. I'm not. I cannot say. Let me just say that for the record. I don't try, and I will never attempt. But um, it's a beautiful story. Yes, um, it's it's so funny. We love this story, and the movies also. Mm-hmm. You know, Code of Many Colors and, and the Christmas mm-hmm. version of that are both of my my oldest daughter is loves Dolly. So her and Daddy, who have the like singing voice for it, mm-hmm. will sing like Code of Many Colors, so they know all the words. So basically, she sings that um, one, and it's special. Yeah. Is she a huge yeah, Dollywood fan? Yes. Yeah. Gotta go to the park all the time. Absolutely. And she, you know, we haven't seen Dolly yet, but we're hoping maybe to go to the parade and go in the spring, yeah. go for opening. <laughs> yeah. That's what we're hoping yeah. for. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. But yes, she loves all of her songs. So, yeah, that one's super special. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Speaking of me and Dolly, have you met Dolly? Yeah. Uh, I think the big question. <laughs> <laughs> so, I cannot tell a lie. I. I have not yet, um, necessarily. So in the last year that I worked for the Dollywood Foundation, every time she's been in town or been in the office, I have been somewhere else oh, no. uh, doing the good work. Yes, that's um, right. However, when she opened Pirate's Voyage, mm-hmm. um, they did a VIP opening uh, before it was open to the public, and I was invited to that event. I took my 14-year-old daughter, oh, who was she nine that. or 10 at the time. Yeah. She, too, huge Dolly fan. Yeah. And we got to sit up front, 
and Dolly comes out in a purple pirate suit. Mm -hmm. We're sitting right up front, and my do I picked her up from school to take her to lunch. Mm -hmm. She had no idea what we were about to do. Oh, oh my gosh. Like Disney World. Yeah, it was oh, a oh, oh, change I'll tell you something about that in a moment. So, so Dolly comes out. She's walking the plank, and she says, "Waha!" And my daughter starts bawling. And she's like, "Mom, it's her. It's really her." I've got a picture of her going. Oh, you just see, yeah. And she's got the little um, medallion that they gave at the little in the treasure box, and she still talks about it. She's like, "Gosh, Dolly." So I, think I would have burst into tears too. So oh, everybody was just. I mean, yeah. just to see, just she's oh, mm -hmm. she's wonderful. And then this past November, I did get to sit second row to her um, at the media day launch for Hearts on Lodge, oh, Heart yeah. Song Lodge yeah. and heard her sing live for the first time and it was just, oh, yeah. I have it saved on my phone, I have to let you see it before I, I leave. It's, <laughs> oh, her voice, she's just so special. Mm -hmm. she's um, special. So you mentioned Disney. Mm -hmm. We went to Disney for the very first time in 2019 mm -hmm. and my daughter said, and I quote, this is babyish. I would rather be at Dollywood. <laughs> wow. She called Magic Kingdom babyish. babyish. I was right because I, mean, I, mean, I was having the time. It was my first cool. time. Yeah. 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 And she said she'd rather be at Dollywood. Wow. Yep. That's interesting. Okay. Yeah. At least we were very close to I know. Yeah. yeah. She's so a little that's, spoiled. Yeah. That's right in our backyard. Oh, my goodness. She's probably going to be really excited for that new Dolly Dolly experience. Oh, I'm really excited really for that. Do uh, you guys get sneak peeks for that, too? We do. Oh. And I can't tell you anything about it. That's okay. I'm sorry. That's okay. okay. I'm sorry. Frank Frank yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of cool, though, with your, with your job that they let you, like, see these other like Dolly Parton adjacent mm -hmm. things yes. like Dollywood and meeting her at the Parkstone Lodge and things like that. So what are some of your favorite things that you do with your work? Obviously Dollywood gives you the opportunity to do Dolly stuff. Mm -hmm. but, like, yeah. So the Dolly stuff is special, mm -hmm. right? Um, and I'll do, I'll do my best to say this without crying, but my favorite part of my job is when a parent or a caregiver or a local program partner reaches out and tells us a story about a child who's received a book. Um, very recently, I got an email uh, from a mom in North Carolina whose daughter had graduated out of the program, mm -hmm. and her daughter, um, birth to five, she had the full 60 books at home library, mm -hmm. and she was being um, recognized at her local library for reading 100 books before kindergarten, mm -hmm. and she's about to go off to kindergarten. And she said, I don't know if this will reach you. I just wanted to share. Um, and it was a picture of her daughter as a little tiny baby in her crib, falling asleep on a dolly book. And then a picture of her with, I'm going to kindergarten. And I just, like, if, if my work or anything that I do in my day, with my team, like, certainly it's a team effort. I can't do it alone. But if there's something that I've done in my day to give a child a book that may not have otherwise had a book, mm -hmm. um, man, yeah. it, it feels really good. It's and we also have many in our collection, of course having two in the program, you know, you've got so many books. But what I love is going back to sort of like the board books when my oldest was the young was young and she like chewed on them and stuff. Which is so special. I don't it know. Maybe it's like only something a parent can appreciate. She's like, I don't <laughs> like, chew my books. She's like, what? Yeah. But I don't know. It's just like we have those still and they're, they're so special. What a good memory. Because yeah. like Obviously, we read them a lot, and yep. they were chewed on a lot, and <laughs> interacted with, so yeah. yeah. So my 14-year-old, it's been a long time since she was on the program, mm -hmm. um, and I kept two of her Imagination mm -hmm. Library books, and you flip it over, and her name is still on the label, and so now her baby sister can have that book, and she says, this is Colby's, she recognizes mm -hmm. her name, and that's, you know, being having your name on that book label mm -hmm. is a big so part, uh, a big part big reason why the model is the way it is, mm -hmm. that pride, that ownership, mm -hmm. um, it's, it's theirs, but she has her sister's books now, and yeah. the two we kept were um, the, the Little Engine That Could mm -hmm. and the Minosaur. Oh, I don't know if you ever got the Minosaur, yeah, but we, mine, 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 oh, he doesn't want to share, no, no, sure. yeah, no, but it's really cute. Yeah, we need that one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you're having yeah. any trouble with them <laughs> sharing or jealousy, the yeah. Minosaur might help you out. I was going to say, it's like you're kids especially if the like siblings do it or something and there's like a kind of staggered they almost get like double the dolly yeah they do you, get yeah, double like, the dolly yeah, yeah. so it's so many. really cool you can you're just like firing on all cylinders mm -hmm. i'm really glad to hear you say that too because um the mission of the imagination library is to inspire a love of reading mm -hmm. the dollywood foundation is Dolly's nonprofit, and we're charged with prolo prolonging her legacy mm -hmm. and so it's really cool to think about Dolly fans mm -hmm. over the generations. Mm -hmm. So, like, I'm a Dolly fan because I grew up in Sevier County, mm -hmm. and then I went to Sevier County High School, and her name and face is on yeah. every, you know, mm -hmm. we just 
we're, these are our roots. We know each other, you know. Yeah. Um, my 14 year old knows Dolly because she grew up going to Dollywood and mm -hmm. she loved her movies. Nine to five was her favorite movie for years. Mm -hmm. My three-year-old only knows Dolly by the picture on this book. She knows her as the book lady. Mm -hmm. And so we're creating new generation of Dolly fans all the time with the Dolly Foundation and the Imagination Library. And it's our job to make sure that her legacy carries on years and years and years mm -hmm. past mm -hmm. anything, you know. Yeah, that, yeah. That's that's why the legacy to be the book lady. Yeah. Like, that's a, yes. like, <laughs> and she says that's her most proud accomplishment. She says she's sort of like a modern-day Carnegie Library. Because yeah. we don't have a lot of, like, wealthy stars who do good work like this mm -hmm. and for selfless reasons and as free as possible. Like, used to, my college campus had a original Carnegie Library and it was gorgeous and it was, like, granite oh, yeah. stone and, like, carpet floor and it was, it was the pinnacle of its time. But at the same time, it's like, she's making a little Carnegie Library in the home. It's like, and that's, you know, foundations spread wide, you know, so I, it's just... It's a feel good moment. You know? It is. She it really, is. And she's truly one of her kind. Like, she is. There's no but St. Dolly. Exactly. Um, she actually won the Carnegie Award last year. She last did. year, the year before. Yeah, I should know it. I should have written it down or yeah. cheated or pulled it out of my phone or something. But she did, yeah, for her philanthropic work for literacy and um, the Imagination Library, the Best Practice Award from the U.S. Library of Congress mm -hmm. for addressing social barriers to literacy. Um, so, yeah, she's. She also, you, you all may already know this, being librarians, but um, last year she accepted um, the highest honor of the American Library Association. She's a lifetime member. Yeah, I think I remember Posters were made. Yes. Oh, it's not that one, yeah. but yeah. Uh, I may or may not have a poster hanging on my wall of it. It's pretty proud of that. It's like the rose and the ribbon. It's like, you, it is like <laughs> that, yeah. yeah. Um, so if somebody's listening now and they want to sign their child up, um, can you sort of tell us how they can go about doing that? So yeah, that absolutely. That absolutely. So the first place to go is imaginationlibrary.com. Mm -hmm. Up in the top right-hand corner, it says check availability. You just enter your address, see if it's available near you, mm -hmm. um, and see if that local program partner is covering your zip code, and it'll tell you, you know, whether or not there is. And if there's not, it'll say sign up to get an alert when it's available in your area. Mm -hmm. Uh, and, and there are no requirements, right? It's free to the family. Um, and so they just enter their address and the child's birthday. And they receive their first book within six to ten weeks, okay, you know, depending on mail. Yeah. 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 yeah, it's pretty simple. Absolutely. 20 states are like completely covered. Like it not mean, completely not covered. Completely. We're working okay. on it. And we have 20 covered. statewide programs. So okay. that means there are 20 states that have written, signed bills, mm -hmm. you know, written into legislation or an executive order mm -hmm. um, that we are legislatively directed to ensure the goal of reaching 65% mm -hmm. uh, of the total eligible population okay. in that state okay. and getting every zip code covered. So we're on our way. We're yeah. On our way. We're on our way. And we have a few in the pipeline. Mm -hmm. Coming up, we actually are in the legislative process in a couple of states right now. As I say, is Tennessee completely covered? Yeah. Okay. Well, Tennessee was the first. Yeah, that yeah, would be. They should be. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Tennessee was actually the first statewide program. Okay. It was the first ever. So the Governor's Early Literacy Foundation, um, it, which was a, a came about from Phil Bradison and Dolly, you know, saying that they wanted to. He had heard about the Imagination Library and mm -hmm. wanted to say, you know. I gotta get this statewide, we gotta do this big. Mm -hmm. And so the Governor's Early Literacy Foundation is the state partner in the state of Tennessee. Mm -hmm. All 95 counties have full coverage. Mm -hmm. So there's not a child in the state of Tennessee, zero five, that shouldn't be able to enroll. Yeah. And then you said five countries. Five countries. The US, Canada, the Republic of Ireland, Australia, and the UK. Wow. Yeah. 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 That's so exciting. It's pretty impressive. Yeah. 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 So Dolly says it all the time, you know, we we've grown tremendously, but we still have a lot of work to do. Yeah. And to put into context, I love this statistic because it really speaks to the growth and why these statewide programs are so important. Mm -hmm. um, so from 1995 to 2021, mm -hmm. we that's you know what? Okay. Okay. That's a long time. That's a long twenty something years. <laughs> yeah. Um, 26 years, yeah. So we celebrated 100 million books being gifted since inception. And Dolly, that's the picture that you see of her reading to the children mm -hmm. at the Library of Congress. Yes. That was celebrating 100 million books gifted. That was in 2021. Mm -hmm. We have since mailed over 229 million oh books. Gosh. So in two years, we've mailed more books than it took us 26 years to accomplish. Uh, and again, can't do that without those local organizations doing the work. Boots on the ground. It's a grassroots, community-based program. Um, but you know, 
these statewide programs with legislation is really helping drive a lot of that enrollment because, and I should have mentioned this earlier, when there's a statewide program, there's funding that's available to the, to the local program partners. Mm -hmm. They get a 50% match mm -hmm. on their monthly book bill. So the state has skin in the game too. And they see the impact, you know, these children are 30% more ready for kindergarten. They've got higher third grade reading level scores, higher social studies math. So there's, it's your next workforce. So it's workforce development. I mean, there's all kinds of, of very, very important um, impact notes to take away for the state. So they invest and, and give back. It's um, almost all of our questions. Yeah. I was gonna say, is there anything that you might want to let people know that we forgot to talk, touch on? Or to let them know that we may have not talked about. Mm -hmm. Read, read to your children every day. Do just 10 minutes, 15 minutes. You know, um, it's really hard when we get home from work, right? Mm -hmm. we, we've worked all day, we're tired, we gotta do dinner, we gotta do laundry, we gotta do bath, homework, bedtime. And so it's easy to get in the groove of just wait till later, wait till mm -hmm. later, wait till later. Don't wait till later, read every day. Mm -hmm. um, a child can read, a child can teach themselves anything. Mm -hmm. So it's very important. So, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. We're going to have to get you in and read stories for storage. I would love to do that. I would love to do it. Would would love to do it. I'm um, reading at Seymour Intermediate on March 1st for mm -hmm. Read Across America. Um, and I, I'm a little bit nervous about that, though, because they're older. Mm -hmm. And yes. I'm not. So I, um, I was very fortunate this past summer to read um, Code of Many Colors mm -hmm. to the young ones up at Pittman Elementary. Mm -hmm. Um, Dolly Stomping Grounds, yeah. and these little kids, there was like 50 children there, mm -hmm. and uh, a couple of them were sitting right in front of me, and they're little girls, and they were just like this the whole time, and they were so sweet, mm -hmm. and when I was done, they said, you're so beautiful, oh, we goodness. love you, and I'm like, like can you so just serious. come to the office, just oh, a little hike team, yeah, you know? they were, yeah, they followed me around, like, I could do this all the time, the older kids, I'm a little nervous about. I gotta say, I remember in fifth grade our teacher read to us and I remember it wasn't often but like every few afternoons she'd pull out a chapter book and use a chapter and the same my teacher in eighth grade did it to us and I, and I gotta say we loved it yeah. like you just have to pick something interesting I yeah. Think is the yeah. and how cool that you're taking that with you and you remember that yeah yes. it was great like we read Redwall and Cirque du Freak and Maximum Riot it was, you know and we had like school wide incentive reading things too during yeah. the time but um, no it was good I think everybody likes to be read too mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Like, their kids don't get as many opportunities because they they, they, they got like, grown too old yeah, yeah. for yeah. that but I think that's fantastic yeah, yeah. I think this kid yeah. Yeah, we'll see. I'll let you know if I'm attacked or okay. Sounds good. Just throwing tomatoes at me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Van. Thank you, Van. Always wonderful editing. Thank you, Kayla. So yeah, much. my pleasure. This is fun. Thank you for coming.